Hi everyone, um, welcome to the Doorbell channel. Today we are going to talk about how we prep files for print. So I have this awesome wedding invitation suite up here uh, for you as an example and we're just going to go through and prepare it exactly for print. So the first thing you want to consider is how your printers want their files and what type of printing. Today we're just going to cover digital printing, um, nothing too crazy. I will show you letterpress and gold foil printing at another date in another tutorial. Um, but as you can see, we have a lot of great colors, a lot of um, full background prints here. So this is gonna be a really cool suite to show you this on. Um, and this looks really clean. I am not a very clean designer, but then when I export everything for the mock-ups, I like to clean it up. Um, as you can see, everything is um, down to these little artboard boxes. If you're not super familiar with um, Adobe Illustrator, these white boxes here on the inside are going to be your artboard, which is everything that will be printed technically. And then these red borders here are your bleeds. And this will just depend on your document bleed settings. So you see that right here where it says bleed, we have an eighth of an inch on all sides, so quarter of an inch top, uh, quarter of an inch vertically, and quarter of an inch horizontally. You can change that if you want, but this is what I found is standard for my printers and what they need. And so when you talk about bleeds, that's basically anything that goes to the edge of the page. So these right here, uh, these diamonds that we've got right here are going to bleed off the edge of the page, and then this triangle right here is also going to bleed off the edge of the page. And so it's impossible to really print digitally right up to the edge of the page, or it's really difficult. So what they do is they typically print off the edge of the page, and then cut it down. So depending on what your printer wants, um, you'll wanna make sure you have bleed settings there. So what I need to do is make sure that anything that goes off the page goes at least until that red box because you kind of don't know exactly where it's going to be cut. So what I've done is I've made a clipping mask with um, a, just a box that's the size of the card itself to show how it's going to look in the proofs. But what I want to do when I'm prepping for print is actually release that clipping mask. So you're gonna release that, and this is how I've designed, which isn't always the cleanest or prettiest way, um, but you can see that this box goes well past those red edges, and these diamonds also are gonna go past the red edges. Um, something like this, I have it cut exactly there, and I know my printers will do a good job of that, but if you're not sure, what you could do is move that diamond up here, and it'll be cut somewhere. Um, along that area, but I know that I've told them to pay attention and cut this one right at the tip of that diamond, so I know they'll be very careful about that. So I'm just going to go through here and release all of my clipping masks so that we get those good bleeds that we need. Release clipping masks. Okay, perfect. So now everything is off the page. And then you kind of just have to use a little bit of brain power here to make sure everything is how it's going to be. So I have shown the front of this card, but it's actually going to be a folded card. So for this thank you card, I just need to um, make this guy. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, so I need to make it um, eight and a half inches tall. There we go. And then I actually am going to re-grab that empty box that we made the clipping mask out of and we want it to stop right here in the middle where the fold is going to be so I'm just going to pull the edges of my blank box out a little bit and then remake that clipping mask which is control 7 or object clipping mask make so then that way we have this cutting off right at uh, four and a quarter, which is exactly where we need it to cut off for the thank you card. So then all of my printers ask for things in PDF format. Yours may ask for things a little bit different, but I think this is the most common format. And so we're gonna save them as PDFs, but what we have to do before that 
is we have to outline all the fonts. So I usually like to save an extra file um, that is just for print ready. So keep the final file with all of the text still um, still editable. Editable, that's a great word to say. Um, just so that in case you have to come back through and you want to copy and paste stuff or you need to make any changes, you can. Um, so I have a whole different file that I prepare for print. So for this, we're just going to select all the text and shift control O or convert it to outlines. I'm just doing this a little bit slower than usual for you guys. Um, but we'll do that on all the pieces. And that just kind of helps in case they don't have the font or need to open it in a different type of program. Um, creating outlines, just make sure that all of your stuff is going to be printed exactly as it is and you don't end up with any like weird characters or anything like that. Um, and then you can kind of choose um, and see if you think you need any extra strokes. Sometimes some fonts are a little bit thin and you need to add a little stroke to them. Uh, these are all perfectly fine. I've printed with them multiple times. Um, and then you also are going to want to make sure that your document color mode is CMYK, which is way better for printing. So most of your printers are going to require things in CMYK format. Um, so you may just, you may start designing if you have photos or things like that, you may be more comfortable in RGB, but your for designing for print, you definitely want to work in CMYK. So I recommend setting that up from the very beginning and making that your default color mode for all of your designs in Illustrator. So now what we have is all of our artboards pretty much ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to take note mentally of the numbers of the artboards because I'm going to need those in a minute. So artboard one is the imitation that makes sense usually. <laughs> Um, artboard 2 is the details card, 3 is the RSVP card, 4 is their rehearsal dinner, and 5 is their thank you cards. And just so you know, anything that is not hitting the edge, like for instance if we had um, this card didn't have anything on the edge, then you don't really have to worry about the bleeds. Um, one of the printers that I use does require every document to have a bleed even if it doesn't need it, but some printers won't require that unless you actually have images or text or anything going up to the edge of the paper. So some of them may not require it for something like this, um, but since we do have bleeds on all these pages, I'm going to make sure they're there, good to go. Um, so then how I save them, I save them all as individual PDFs at the size of the artboard. So that's the great thing about designing on artboards is that this one's going to save as a PDF that's five by seven plus your bleeds. So that'll be five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Some printers will let you send them all in one PDF with different pages. What I use likes me to upload them separately, so I save them all separately. So you're just going to go save as, and I always like to create a new folder that says print files within the client's uh, other folders. So then I'm going to remember the invite, which is ready for print, is artboard number one. So we're going to save as an Adobe PDF. We're going to save artboard one. And then there's a few things you can do. I like to get rid of this um, preserve Illustrator editing capabilities because we don't need that. Um, what that does in a PDF is even if you're only saving the first artboard, it keeps all the data of all the other artboards and everything else in the whole document so that you can reopen that PDF in Illustrator in the future. I don't need to do that with my print ready files because I have the same file saved elsewhere uh, that's in the same exact position here. So I don't actually need that with these files and it makes them a lot smaller. So then they take less time to upload. I can email them easier if I ever need to email them and they take up less space on my computer. So I get rid of that. And then typically I just keep it at Illustrator default. Um, if you are printing, you definitely don't want to go with the smallest file size. Um, you can go with press quality, but I prefer the 2008, 2002, and 2001. These all have printed fine for me, uh, but it just kind of depends on exactly what your, uh, what your printer wants. But 
Illustrator default is pretty good. Um, so compression, we want to not compress these at all. If you're preparing something that you can only upload a certain file size, then you may need to compress them a little bit. Um, typically that doesn't happen, especially with something with this watercolor. I don't want to compress this at all because I don't want it to get pixelated. Marks and bleeds. So some printers are going to ask for some of these marks and bleeds and these just help them with a lot of different things. The main thing that I typically do provide is trim marks for a lot of printers and what that's going to do is print a little mark uh, because you have the bleed it'll pr print a little mark up here that shows exactly where they're supposed to cut it. So that's really helpful because you can see this outside piece is not actually centered or anything so the marks will show um, where they can cut it so it's exactly where I want those cuts to be. So a lot of printers will require trim marks, just kind of depends on what you, um, you know, what you need. And then using the document bleed settings is the easiest way to not screw this up, so I highly recommend that. Uh, but if for some reason you need something different, you can always change it here. Just make sure, like if you, um, this is something you can uncheck if you don't need a bleed for some reason. But if you want to change it, for instance, your printer requires, um, you know, a quarter inch on each side instead of an eighth. Just make sure, uh, because this red line is only an eighth, so if you end up doing quarter inch, then, uh, for instance, this watercolor piece right here will not be printed on that. So just make sure if they need a larger bleed for some reason that you make the artwork a little bit larger and make sure that it, that it follows the correct bleed settings there. So that's pretty much the only thing you're going to use. I always use a document bleed settings. Um, you're not going to need to use any of these for the most part. So you can just save the PDF at that point. You're going to want to do that with each individual piece. I typically like to use the same settings, even if, for instance, I have a piece that doesn't bleed, I would use the same settings so it's less confusing for everyone. And with your bleeds, one thing that you want to pay attention to here, um, so this is actually a slightly tricky one because you have to have them all cut in the same place. Um, if you have artwork, for instance, I did have a watercolor um, drawing that ended up looking a little bit different because when we made the artwork bigger for the bleed, it actually cut off a piece that you could see when you were designing an illustrator, but then it actually got cut off in the cut. So anything that's really close to the edge could be in danger of being cut off. So you just have to be careful. Um, make sure if you're doing something exact like this, I actually sent these to my local printer so that we could talk about it in person. He could do a little sample for me and that we could visually see exactly how it's going to look and he knew exactly how I wanted that to be. Um, sometimes I use online printers for things that are less specific. For instance, this one right here, it doesn't quite matter as much if it's cut exactly right here on the line or maybe if it's cut a little bit higher than that or a little bit to the right or left. This one here, it kind of wouldn't make too much of a difference. But if we had something important along the edge, you just want to make sure that when you make the artwork bigger. So if you are painting like a watercolor scene or crest or something, just make sure that you paint an extra eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever you need for the bleed that you don't mind potentially being cut off. So something like maybe grass on the edge of, you know, the field where your couple is if you're painting them or if you're painting the dog, um, you know, put some trees in the background that might get cut off a little bit, but it's not going to change the design at all. So this is a little bit about how we prep our files for digital printing. We will cover letterpress and gold foil printing in a different lesson, uh, but make sure the most important thing is that you just ask your printers what they require as far as file specs go, because some people print on uh, different types of items from different types of files. They might require different color modes, different bleed settings, and different marks. So just make sure you ask them and then follow whatever specifications they give you because that's going to give you the best results. And then it will also avoid any additional charges for setup that they have to do on their end. So if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Um, subscribe to our channel so that you can see more cool tutorials like this and let us know what you want to hear.